During a failed take of this episode, in the end of day sequence, I noticed something. It showed a wide shot of this bridge, and I noticed a ledge that I did not know existed. Thank you for my Canadian accent. But I didn't know it existed. So, I'm going to show it off right now. I never knew this existed in all of my playthroughs, and I can actually thank my computer's horrible RAM for this, because if I did not do a second take, I would not have seen this. So, my computer's bad RAM actually was helpful for once. Hey guys and gals, I'm Paladin, and welcome back to more Okami. Last episode, we restored Hana Valley. We also got a new brush technique, Bloom, which I unfortunately... Oh wait, no, I just showed it off. I bloomed that clover, and that's the technique. It allows us to bloom plants that are withered, and with that, we are now able to restore Shinshu Field, so we're going to do such right now. In fact, that's why I'm heading towards this very moment. And also, we're going to be heading around Shinshu Field once we restore it, uh, just finding our way around the place. So, let's do that right now. Okay, that's a new brush technique in the bag. Now, Ami. Before you get all excited and forget what you're supposed to do, I have an important tip for you. Ready? Okay then. If you ever forget what to do next, press the plus button to open up the fan menu, and then take a look at the logbook. You'll find your journal there. And for those of you who are watching right now, of course you are, because that's who I'm talking to. But you'll probably notice that the menu is blurred or not there, or I did something to avoid that. That's because for some reason, Capcom decided to put visual content for or Okami in the content ID searches of YouTube. So I can no longer show menus unless it's absolutely necessary. And I do not count this moment as being absolutely necessary. So I'm just going to tell you what it opened up. It opened up the log bo book to our journal and it shows a new entry talking about revi reviving guardian saplings. And Isun is addressing us saying, Hey Ami, what about that withered guardian sapling on the outer field, aka Shinshu? I bet you could ri revive it as well. And by bringing that guardian sapling back to life, we might be able to lift the curse there too. And there we go. Your journal is a record of important dialogue you've heard, which is things I've discussed last episode. It shows all the important info you have in that furry little head. Just dig up info the way I showed you, and you'll be able to recall important things. Your adventure will be a lot easier if you remember this. Also remember, first things first. N okay, let's get going. So yeah, I now have to dim out uh, menus for Okami and loading screens. I'm going to be cutting those out completely. So yeah, that's very sad. Freaky. <clears throat> it looks like the river suddenly cleared up. I did see Susano whizzing past here a little while ago. But it surely it wasn't him who cleaned up the river, was it? Nah, that wouldn't make any sense. We can play later. Just look at the river. See how clear it is? I can see my reflection and see double. Except, like this, I don't have to smoke anything to do it. <laughs> Sorry, I went too far on that one, but really, that's he's a hippie. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, with that out of the way, we can now head to uh, the Guardian Sapling and hopefully restore it with our new technique. Now, there's a moment in every single video game, at least the ones I've played, that, well, unless I di didn't have it, because, yeah, I'll, and never mind. Uh, there's a point where you just kind of get invested in the gameplay or the storyline, and you can't put the game down for a few weeks while you try it, while you complete it, or a month. This was that moment, unless the video game's completely horrible, in which case you put it down immediately and you never have a chance for such a moment, but this was the moment for me. Let me go ahead and circle this, and bloom it, and you guys can see what I mean. There you go. Just the combination of that music with that amazing art. It, it is art. 
it just is gorgeous and a little bit breathtaking. Also, I, I had to keep that menu in there because I was talking, so I can't cut it out. Yeah, I'm going to be missing a few menus. Wow, that nasty curse zone is completely gone. The plants and animals are back, and just feel that fresh breeze. Now that's what I call great divine intervention. If you keep on to spelling the evil curse like this, I bet the gods of nature will lend you their powers. Hey, that's... That's Sakyu's tree, isn't it? Maybe she perked up because you revived a guardian sapling. Well, we can stop by and see her later. Of course he would say that because he's kind of into her. I mean, we're kind of on a roll here. How about we take a look around Shinshu Field first? You've been gone 100 years, right? A good run around the place will do you good. I think Isun is, is saying in the politest way possible, well, as polite as Isun can be, that uh, Ami's a little bit fat, but look at her, she, she's gorgeous. Like, look at, look at that form, it's very sleek. It's almost like a greyhound, it's not quite wolfish, it's a little bit different. So yeah, now that we've restored this area, we can go to the place where the curse zones were, although there are still places where the evil examine. This guardian sapling's back to normal. And the curse zone that covered this area is completely gone. Now it, can, now it can protect this land as it once did. But yeah, there are places where the evil is still around, and I will show these, because I'm going to be covering this area in a... Hmm... A... Clockwise. Yeah, clockwise. I'm gonna do clockwise. Now, this guy has stuff to sell, but... It, it's the same old stuff, so I'm not going to be bothering with it. What I will bother with is this area over here. This area is still a curse zone, as we saw back in, uh... Hana Valley, they're very similar. And so we need to restore that by filling it in, much like we would with Rejuvenation, we can completely fill it up and restore it. Now we want to be going around Shinshu Field doing this to all the areas, because there's are some places where the evil has slipped through, so we want to do that and get more praise. Now I said, I believe I said last episode, uh, let me go ahead and feed these while I'm talking, uh, I believe I said last episode that I'd be upgrading my, my skills at the end of that episode. But because there's so much praise around here, I'd rather just do it once, so then, uh, yeah, co it, it's content ID stuff, so I'd rather go into a menu once than go into it to a bunch of times. Now, you'll see that there's a, a uh, clover right here, but we can't actually get it. It's, it's underneath this rock, so apparently we need something later on in the game to do that, so, yeah. Now, there's a part right here that's evil, and so let's go and look at it. It's a whoa. Yes, it's it's definitely a whoa, Isun. What's up with this old gate? I don't like the looks of it. It's just teeming with evil power. I can feel it. Still, you being a god and all, we can't just ignore it. What do you think, my furry friend? We going through it or what? And that would be a yes. Now, these are basically demon scroll pluses. What they do is they don't chase after you like some demon scrolls. Actually, in a failed take of this episode, a demon scroll actually did chase after me. So be careful of that. They actually will apparently sometimes. Uh, it doesn't chase you, but like a demon scroll, when you go through this, it'll initiate a battle. However, this is a battle unlike anything we've seen before, I believe. Uh, what it will do, actually, let's just show it. What it will do is, after we've defeated the first few enemies, more will actually spawn. And that is, uh, that is much harder. Th these areas can be fairly brutal. Let me go and grab that demon fang. Um, yeah, they can be really brutal. So, you want to go into he these things prepared. Uh, there we go. And he's dead. Power slash. Uh, he's gray. Power slash. Let me take care of these red imps first, just because they're closest. Um, he's over here. There we go. This green imp's getting a l oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. getting a little too close. Let me go ahead and power slash both these at the same time. And let me show you something. Wolf Fu. When you have no ink, uh, Amaterasu will do these awesome kicks, which is really cool. Like Amaterasu's pretty boss already, but the fact that when she has no pa no godly power, she'll still keep on fighting. She's not helpless. That's that's really admirable. I think. So, with level 2 godhood, we can complete this, and any more enemies? No. 1800 yen, very good. And we clear this up, and just like with a uh, small curse zone, 
This will restore things as well, and give us praise? No, it'll just give us a chest. Okay. So that's it. Those things are those things are gateways to monster lairs. I've heard of such gates before. They're called devil gates. Now, I myself tend to call them demon gates, so I'll probably be calling them that. It's the same thing, pretty much, sort of. Those monsters got a lot of nerve building things like that. Let's tear them down wherever we find them. Okay, so that is one of our missions. We're going to be tearing those down because we get cool things like a vengeance slip. If you'll remember, those give us temporary invincibility, so that's really nice. So, uh, in the spirit of... Oh, wait, I'm going... I'm going counterclockwise. Okay, so apparently I'm going counterclockwise. I saw it as clockwise, but apparently I'm not. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not going clockwise. I'm going counterclockwise. Sorry, I cannot tell my directions. Uh, we're going to be going near this building over here. There's another demon gate. <sighs> I'm debating showing these or not. I think that what I'm going to do, I think from now on, unless they're vastly important, like they give us an amazing reward, I'm going to be cutting these out and then just telling you what enemies I face afterwards. I think that will keep things r uh, running fairly fast because I don't want to stall for time too much. But also, for those of you playing along, it'll still be informative and it'll still be a guide. So you can know what to be prepared for. So, I will meet you on the other side of this where I can tell you what enemies I face. Be right back. And there it is. Battle done. I fought... Two yellow imps and four green imps, not in that order. I fought one yellow imp, then there were uh, four green imps, then there is one another yellow imp. So those of you playing along, that's what to be prepared for. That was actually quite a battle, and I found something that is actually really nice. Uh, from now on, ooh, wait just a second, huh? What a pretentious sign. I have no idea what that sign means. Ami, this here is a dojo. It's where people come to learn sword fighting and martial arts. But who knows if they'll train you here. Maybe if you're a good wolfie, they'll teach you a trick or two. Aww. Well, while I'm feeding these, I'll tell you what I was going to say. Uh, a better way to fight yellow imps is to let them attack you. Yes, I said that. Uh, when they do their cannon, they have two attacks. They have one where they drum, and then they uh, unleash in a massive shockwave. But they also have one where they'll hold the cannon up and their drum up and shoot it like a cannon. With that one, they'll actually blast themselves back if they miss, and keep themselves in a, a normless ending lag. Yes, I'm using Smash Bros. terms. Um, they'll turn gray, which means they're weak to power slash, but don't power slash them. Keep hitting them, and you can pretty much take them down from um, full health to death. So that's actually really useful. Another thing is, when they go underground, if you uh, come up behind them when they resurface, so jump over them, come up from behind, you can also zero death them because they are they get confused as to where you are and then they uh, turn gray and they're weak. So that's actually really nice. Now this fire next to the dojo, uh, we can't deal with this yet, so don't bother with it. Right now we're just going to go inside. And I can bring out yet another Dragon Ball Z voice. Most of my voices are based on Dragon Ball Z. For those of you who don't know, that's an anime. And it's amazing. So you guys should watch it. Watch Dragon Ball Z. Especially because their new movie just came out. Uh, but yeah, all my voices are based on Dragon Ball Z pretty much. Uh, including Susano's. So let me come up with a voice for him. Well, what do we have here? <clears throat> it looks like I have an adorable lupine visitor. My name is Onigiri Sensei. And he this here is my dojo. Fighting Master, Onigiri Sensei. What business could a wolf like yourself have, a do have at a dojo like this? Certainly you haven't come to study the fighting arts with yours truly. Learn a new combat move? You bet, yes. Haha, <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, my furry furry friend. I'd like very much to while away the hours at play with you, but I'm afraid that this place is far too dangerous for creatures like you. That is, of course, unless you can cover the training fee. Uh, and that we can. Uh, the first technique is Fleet Foot, which I'll be learning right now. It will allow me to swing the nunchuck and basically have a dodge. Sort of like Brawl, except it's better because you're invulnerable and you're caught in no ending lag of the move. Also, it's not as predictable because you can do four directions. So we're going to be learning that second because this one's highly redundant and now nah, fine we'll learn it first 
We're going to be learning both of these because we have the cash. I'll be a monkey's uncle. You've got the cash, have you? I see. I suppose I have no choice. I'll do as you wish and allow you to enroll in my dojo. And this is a Capcom reference if I've ever seen one. Ah. Uh oh. He'll flip his head around and take the pose of... Beautiful Joe! Ah! Are you mentally prepared to handle the ultimate challenge? Step inside to test your might. And that we are. Oops, sorry. Do not incite my wrath. Oh, wow, he'll actually jump attack at us. Okay, so let's go through here before we incite his wrath. Now, if those of you who have watched Dragon Ball Z, uh, I'll just go and make it easy for you by telling you what my voices are. Uh, for his old man form, where he's unassuming, he is Master Roshi. For this form, he is Cell, which is one of my best Dragon Ball Z voices ever. Let the lesson begin. We'll practice the Fleet Foot God technique. Take these tips to heart and remember them as we train. Fleet Foot, Fleet Foot God technique tips. Swing the Nunchuck quickly and without hesitation. In doing so, you can quickly bound out of the way of incoming attacks. You will move in the direction you swing the Nunchuck. You can instantly I execute a dash immediately following- wait, what? Okay. I don't know what that, what that means at all. Okay. There we go. Well, do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, sort of. Not really, but I'll try it. I don't know what the whole dash after a jump thing is, but yeah, I'll tell you what I know. Check it when you forget what it means to be a warrior. He gave us a scroll, and that will allow us to recheck the technique. This technique can only be mastered by the best. It is not something to be learned. You must have the innate ability. Ah. Train until your muscles ache, then train some more. Okay, so uh, just swing the chuck, and you can go from side to side. And there you go. That's pretty much it. It's... It's something I don't typically get on my playthroughs because it's something that uh, you can accidentally do and it can kind of get annoying when you're when you're fighting and you accidentally hit this so uh, yeah now interesting thing is you can cancel attacks with this so while in in mid attack if you see that you're about to get hit by something you can immediately dodge or you can use it as an actual technique to uh, get in further. If you know they're about to attack you, you can attack them, move in, and keep attacking, like so. Or, if they have a projectile, you can move in, or, sorry, move in and immediately attack. So that's very useful. Now, he will keep us here forever because there's no, like, right or wrong way. It just, he'll just say, like, keep at it, dog, do this. So I'm going to go and leave because we have it down. Had enough, eh? Listen, Wolf, gaining experience as a single skill is admirable, but you must never lose the drive for self-improvement. I pray that you do not forget that. Ah. And hopefully I'm not creeping you guys out with my soul voice, because I'm really proud of it. It's something I can just naturally do, which is scary. But I love doing the voice. Whenever I have an opportunity, I do that voice. So we have more and more technique. However, I'd like to make a uh, wonderful reference to one of my favorite LPs by initiating a new thing. Whenever I have to speed something up but I still have to, to explain what's happening, I'm going to be introducing something. It's it's sort of... oopsie. It's sort of like... well, I'm just going to mention the, the LP here. I'm sorry if this is not like allowed or something. I mean it in the highest respect, but it's like a uh, Messianella, one of my favorite LPers of all time. If you haven't watched her channel, go watch it. It's actually in the suggested channels box on my home, on my channel page. So go watch her channel. It's amazing. But um, it, I'm going to be bringing something up that she does sort of herself. I'm not going to be directly copying it because we have different, two different voices. But what I'm going to be doing is introducing what I like to coin Salesman Pal, which is a uh, when I have to explain something, I'm going to be speeding up. Now, back in Skyward Sword, when we were going through the Laneru region, I was just playing around and I decided to speed my voice up. And what happened was something not unlike what sounds like a car salesman, like a sleazy car salesman that speaks super fast and try to throw in things that, you know, you didn't, you don't notice, but it sounds like a car salesman. And no respect to car salesmen, because I have an uncle who is one. But 
yeah, so I'm gonna be speeding up my own voice here because this is highly redundant to learn these techniques. It's extremely redundant. So yeah, speeding up very soon. Uh, basically what it does is it allows us to add a fourth hit to our normal reflector attack combo. Now in case you're unclear on what a reflector is, that is the weapon type that we are using. There are multiple weapon types as you can see here if we, uh, like right here, that shows basically the same thing, but we don't have that yet. So the weapon we're using now is a reflector, so you want to know that so we can know what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, salesman, pal, go ahead and uh, come in here and start talking because uh, we're burning daylight. Let's go ahead and learn this technique and let me speed talk while I'm being salesman pal. So, so you once again choose to try your hand at the fighting arts. I suppose I have no choice. Oh, sorry, his old man voice. I'll do as you wish and allow you to enroll in my dojo. But I must warn you, I can't. I won't hold back this time. Ah, uh -oh. And he'll do the same thing, but I have the power of skippage. And I'm going to go and skippage him. Let me go by, and now that he has flames on his clothes, which he didn't have those before, I can head through and have him train us this. That was highly unorganized sentence-wise. Let the lesson begin. We'll practice the Four Winds Reflector Technique. Take these tips to heart and remember them as we train. Four Winds Reflector Technique Tips. First, swing the Wiimote to begin the attack. Swing it again rapidly in succession. Time it well. Repeat until you connect four consecutive reflector hits. This combo will make short work of enemies and looks good too. Thank you, Billy Mays. Well, do you understand? Yes, I do. Very well. Very well, then. I'll grant you this technique scroll. Check it when you forget what it means to be a warrior. Vegeta would be a good voice for him as well. So, I got the technique scroll, and now I can understand it with my body as well as my mind. On guard. And for the first time, we'll, he'll have us backflip, and he'll summon this thing, which allows us to practice our technique. So, we just go hit, 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 hit. And very good! You're the winner! You get confetti! And you can do it many times. Not bad. Keep it up. Ah! And he'll slap the ground and it'll magically mend itself. And it does take very good timing, so you want to swing, 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 and swing. The reason I'm not cutting this out is so you guys can see the timing on the top of the screen. So I'm going to do it one more time, just in case you're not quite sure. Not quite. Put more energy into it. Ah. And slap the ground and ah! And let's go ahead and hit it again. One, two, three, four. There we go. Good job! Is all the strength you can muster. Okay, okay, sorry. Maybe one more time. I, I apologize. One, two, three, four. And there we go. We have three. We have four hits instead of the normal three. And now I can leave this place. Yes, let your warrior spirit burn bright. And he'll scream, and that's done. Let's let's go. I'm sorry. Goodbye. I don't want to be training forever. Goodbye. And with that tech, those two techniques and paw, uh, he'll just say this, and we can skip this because we've already talked about that. And we can leave. Finally, 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 finally. Now with those two techniques, we can leave. So, uh, there's one thing I should do before we go, and this is going to be the thing that the rest of this video is dedicated to, and that is stray beads. We have four to get in this episode. Yes, four. I know it's insane, but that's the reality. Uh, one of them is behind the dojo, in between all the three of these bushes. Just right in the center, there's a handle, which you can barely see. It'd actually be better for you to search these out at night, but I'm not doing that. You obtain stray bead. And there we go, there's one. Now, the other one is this way. You want to just run over here, and keep going. And we want to run up here. Now, there are things I'm not going to be covering. Also, the game's lagging a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to be... Ooh, horses. Distractions! Uh, I'm not going to be covering quite yet. There are certain loca locales that I'm not going to. But don't worry, we'll be covering these next episode. I just want to get some things done before this episode is ended off. Let's go ahead and feed these horses, which there are horses in the game. Can we bite them? <laughs> yeah, we can't carry these around. What if we do this? No, okay. It'll it'll run, but we can't like throw it, which is sad. Although that'd be really funny. Jump. Ami, thank you. Uh, let's go this way, because there's a curse zone over there, which I would... Ooh, and there's something here, too. More distractions, even more. Uh, let me go and feed these. This is also partially the uh, the feed animal episode, although I probably should have done that in, like, the end slate. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I won't do any more... I'll, I'll do more animals this episode, but I won't... But in the future, I'll do, just do it in the end slate, so that'll, that'll make things easier. Uh, we obtain feeding. Scroll drawn by... Okay. So it just contains info on feeding. This sign says, Agata Forest Port. The ferry between Shinshu Field and Agata Forest docks here. The ferry used to run frequently, but it's been out of service ever since the water level dropped. That's sad. 
That it's sad when businesses close down, especially in this recession. You know, the American recession. Is it worldwide? I don't know. Uh, there is a curse zone right here. Me talking about politics. Uh, um, that we want to fill in, maybe. Game. Do we circle this one? No. Okay, I think I'm doing it right. Please say I am, because... There we go. Okay, it wasn't registering for the first few times. And there we go. Now, it has this, which we ha can't do anything yet with this. We can examine this. Wow, the ground here is really cracked... The ground here is really cracked up here, isn't it? That's kind of redundant. It says here twice. I bet it could be destroyed with a powerful explosion. Boom! It'd fall apart like a cheap souvenir. That it would, Isun, that it would. But we can't do that, sadly. We don't have any explosives. Though, dynamite, man. That says that we're going to be getting some dynamite. So, Napoleon dynamite. <laughs> so, we want to jump down here. And there is a stray bee down here. Along with, their, with two trees that we should go ahead and bloom. Bloom. There we go. And, oh, nice. Nice. Nice and nice. That's very good. There is a stray bead here, which you can now easily see. Right here. At the base of this ramp. And there you go. Uh, now, we, I want to go inside this building real fast. It won't. It doesn't have any uh, merit this episode, though it will next time. But I just want to get it while it's night. Okay, so I want to talk to this person while it's nighttime, just because it, you don't have to do it while it's night, it just is very useful to do so. Oh, dear me, dear me, I have no idea if this is a guy or a girl, so I have no idea what voice to use. This is awful. Priest of the Moon Shrine, Mika. Oh, it's, it's a guy, okay, I can hear the voice. Ah, a most welcome guest has wandered into our shrine. Your timing is in, immaculate, Wolf. I need to speak to you. Outside is Lake Harami, Nippon's largest lake. In the middle of it, there was an old shrine called the Moon Cave. But it's completely disappeared, vanished into thin air. It enshrines the wicked demon that Nagi and Shirinui once defeated. It houses Sukuyomi, the fabled sword that keeps the demon at, at bay. That demon, his its name was... No, I'll be cursed if I say it. Anyway, the point is, what on earth happened to the shrine? It's guarded day and night by Tao Master Waka. On the one occasion that he has to go back to the city, this happens. Oh dear. This is very interesting. Lately, there there have been monsters haunting these parts as well. Those mischief-making monsters are the worst. I expect this is their doing. Well, maybe not this time. But they still need to be dealt with. I've already prepped a wanted list for them. And, uh, I can't show this, which is sad. Uh, Capcom. Uh, but it has a bunch of names, which are really cool. Uh, if I can, I, I guess I can, like, narrow the thing down. You know what, no, I'm just gonna show it. I don't care. I'm just gonna show it. If I get hit by content ID, I do. It's better that I do that than ruin the experience of the of the uh, the viewer. So, you, the viewer, are seeing this in living color. The gods will still have mar will have marked all of those wanted monsters with a sign. You you will know this as soon as you lay eyes on them. However, they're very cautious. They only come out at night. This is why we're doing this at night. Will you go put this list up list up somewhere obvious, Wolf? I'm sure some brave soul will step up to the challenge. You obtained Mika's Monster Notebook. May the gods protect you always. Hey, this is a sweet job for us, Ami. Let's keep this list handy and take care of all those mischief-making monsters ourselves. I mean, we're going to run into them whether we like it or not. So we might as well collect the reward, too. Anyway, seems they only come out at night. Let's give it a shot. So yeah, if I see a place where I can get those, this ep- Wait, what? Um... Apparently we just- Okay, I just left and I was pitched right into a battle. We have two more stray beats to collect. I don't want the video to be too long. What's with this monster? And wow, that's really strange that we were pitched into a battle right when we left the building. I have no idea what's up with that. Maybe that always happens. It's got an exercising arrow stuck in it. Exercising- Uh, yeah, exercising? Yeah. Yeah, that's the right word arrows are sacred relics for driving away evil. That means that someone really wanted to get rid of this monster. Come on, Ami. Finish it off. 
Don't let it get away. I don't th I don't believe that these monsters are any tougher than uh, normal ones, but they have to be defeated for quests, so we're going to do so. I didn't mean to show a battle because I didn't know. It Whoa! That w actually saved us. Our dodge technique saved us right there. Death. Uh, death. Toya of the Short Temper defeated. Now you want to remember this name because it is necessary. So Toya of the Short Temper. Now when you defeat this enemy, all the other enemies in the area will die. So you want to go after the ex exorcismed monster first. And it will bring up this awesome music. That was one of those monsters from the monster notebook. And we just happened to find it. Well, sort of. Boy, you never know what it will ha what you'll find next. You know what monster notebook you know that monster notebook you have? Well, you can cross out the wanted monster you've taken care of. The monster you just finished off is on this wanted list. Go ahead and strike the name off with the list with your brush. And that was Toya of the Short Temper, so gently do it. Uh, that- oh, that worked, okay. There it is. That's one less monster. At this rate, it won't be long before you can cross them all out. Once you defeat all the monsters, you go see the priest. Maybe he'll give you a reward. And we're going to be doing that next episode, but this episode isn't quite over. I know it's really going up there on time. Actually, no. I think we have a few more minutes. But, yeah, uh, let me go ahead and look at the map. What are those circles? I don't know what those circles are, but next episode, regardless of what those circles are... Oh. Yeah, he'll chase you. Uh, regardless of what those circles are... Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, we're going to be getting all of those monsters next episode. So, yeah, I just want to point that out. So, we have two more things to get this episode besides this clover, which I'm going to grab now. And that demon gate, which I'll have to grab. Ugh. Distractions. Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, so, we have a couple more stray beads. This one is right here on the map. You'll see it right there. Uh, and between all of these bushes, south and uh, east of the tree. So, there it is. Stray bead, number three, or how whatever number it is. Now, before we get the last stray bead, I'm going to get this uh, demon gate, but I will be cutting, like I said, and uh, yeah, I'll be cutting, like I said, because I I was gonna say I need to show show the four winds technique, but I already did that. I did it in the uh, in the wanted monsters thing, uh, though I didn't really say it. So I'm gonna be going in here and cutting out and just telling you what monsters I face. So be right back. And there we go, battle over. That had three red imps and one yellow one. So there we go, done. Now I'm going to go and feed these rabbits and I'll actually cut this out. There we go, rabbits done or conquered, whatever you want to call it. Now the last stray beat of this video and the end of this video is located right over here and I rot oh man my, my word there's treasure oh my word so many distractions well it's really good that this is a long episode at least I sure hope to to Cloverfield Mexico it is because if it's not supposed to be a long episode then I'm really embarrassed but I think it is I think this is episode for Saturday so yeah um, there is a treasure here which is not a stray bead the stray bead we want and the final one of the video is over here and you know what it's another demon gate. So I'll have to cut out this again. So I'll be right back after I cut this out and this will allow us to get the stray bead. And another battle over. I believe it was hard to keep track of that, but I believe that it had four, four red imps and two green imps. I believe the green imps were first and then the red imps followed. So I believe that was it. So, with that out of the way, we have one last thing to collect this video after I feed... No, I'll feed those later. I don't care. Ugh. Distractions. And that is... Okay, not the distraction, but the last thing in the video is this stray bead, which is the last stray bead we can obtain for now in Shinshu Field, and that is number four, whatever number this is. There we go. Done. And with that, this video is done. Uh, ha, ha, ho. Uh, th this video is a little bit too long, I think, but we I had to get all this stuff done or else I'd have to distribute all this throughout like three episodes. So now that this is done, I am content. I'm at peace. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. And 
I'll upgrade my stuff next episode. I said I'd do it this last episode. I said I'd do it this episode. But I'll do it next episode. Beginning of next episode. If I don't do it, I will eat a sock. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I release new episodes of Okami. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays are long episodes. And next time in Okami, we're going to be doing the last few things we need to do in Shinshu Field. And we're going to be moving on with our lives. With game-wise. That's what we're doing. Because if you move on with your lives with this channel, I'll be sad. This is the life, huh? It's great to be clutching my axe again. You've been doing that the past three days. See this kiln, friend? It disappeared when that curse struck. My workshop is my pride and joy. I'm stoked to have it back. I'm actually an artist communing with nature on a deep level, man. I can hardly wait to start firing up some pots again.